I'm Maddie from Cool Smart. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about our market bag. This is a great little bag to go green, use cloth bags. Um, you can also use up your stash. Uh, it, it takes a little bit less than one yard of fabric, so if you have some fabrics that you're not real keen on, it's a great way to use those. Um, there's lots of little options that are in the pattern, and it's also a really quick gift to make. Here's some great examples here. So just before I start showing you how, I want to show you what you get. You get the pattern and you get these great instructions and you get interfacing and you get enough interfacing for four bags. That's two panels. So one panel makes two bags. And that's what that looks like. So you're going to cut this apart into two pieces which will make two bags. So you're going to fold the fabric right sides together and then press along the crease. Then we're going to take one of the interfacing pieces and press along the fold where the line is and you'll see that. It's easy to do. Just line that up and take your iron. I like to use a little bit of steam and just press that down over the whole piece. It only needs to be pressed enough to adhere to the fabric for sewing. And just continue pressing. So we're going to cut off this little bit of extra here along the line of the interfacing. And you can use that for extended handles or to make the bag longer or for your stash. And next we're going to sew on the lines and you just sew on the solid lines. And you're going to be sewing between the dots. So from the one end to the dot and do a little back stitch. Then go to the next section and sew on that solid line. And use about a 2.0 millimeter stitch. That'll help you go around the curves easily. And we're just going all the way around. To the end. Again, back stitch. And you'll be sewing the inside solid lines too, so any solid line you're going to sew on. This will form the pocket. On the pocket you sew to the dotted line you're going to have a little space left for opening and that's printed on the interfacing which is part of what's cool about the interfacing now we're going to cut on the dash lines you can use a rotary cutter like i'm doing here uh, you might want to do a little smaller rotary cutter it might be a little easier or you can use the scissors is certainly easy to do too and you're just cutting right between the lines that you sewed and they're all marked, they're all dashed lines that you're cutting on. Now you've got your pieces that you can just pull out. I'm not going to use the two end pieces or the middle one, but the other two are going to form pockets on the bag. And what you're going to do with the pockets is through that area where it says leave open to turn, you're going to use that to turn the pocket right side out. And use a pointer creaser to get those corners nice and the curves smooth. Then you're going to tuck in the leave open to turn part, do a good finger press. And you can fold it over if you want or leave it open. And to position that into the bag, you're going to lift up the fabric and you're going to place it under the two spots marked, the two little dots marked on the bag. 
It doesn't really matter which side it goes on. I kind of like to put it on the interfacing side because I can pin it right near those dots and know that I've got it in the right place, which will be centered on the back. Add a couple pins. And then what you'll be doing is sewing around that and that will take in the part that was left open. After you do that, you're gonna clip the curves and those are marked for you. Another great thing about the interfacing, everything's marked, it's easy to do. And now we're going, after all that's done, you're going to open it up and fold it down the middle. And there's a little fold line, you'll see that, but you're going to put the sides of the bag right sides together, raw edges even. So you'll have salvage most likely at each end. And you wanna match up the side. I use a pin there, that side seam, and then match the bottom. And you're going to start sewing there. It's about a quarter of an inch. It's even with the line on the interfacing. A quarter inch will be fine. Even up your edges as you sew along. And sew the entire length of the back. Now we're just gonna fold in the pleats. And these make really cool and super easy pleats on this back. I'm gonna pin it over about an inch and a half from the fold and about an inch and a half from the seam line on the other side. I'm gonna put some pins here to mark myself leaving a opening that's about as big as your hand because that's where we're gonna turn this from. And I like to do, use two cross pins to mark that so I know not to sew across that. So I'm just gonna stitch each end section of that. On the other side, I'm gonna fold it over the same amount, put a pin, about an inch and a half, same as the other side. This one you're gonna sew all the way across. Start sewing, and you can sew just above the selvage line if you want because that might be a little bit deeper than a quarter inch. And it's not a bad thing to have a little extra fabric in the bottom of the bag, gives it a little strength. Back stitch. And the side with the opening, you just sew to the pins and stop to the cross pins. the same to the other side okay almost done now we're just gonna turn it get these cool little corners on the market bag kind of like a grocery bag in the store and you're going to pull out the handles and you can do that by hand like I'm doing here and just pull it out there's some turning tools that would work my favorite the hemostat. Just put that all the way inside, pinch the edges, and pull it out. And that is slick. You can also use it to poke out the corners once you've pulled it. Now there's the leave open to turn section. It's going to need to be shut, stitch shut. So we pull those corners out first. And then finger press the edges together. And stitch across that opening. You can do it by hand if you want to. I like to do the machine. Uh, your bag is basically reversible except for this one seam, but this, this seam does not look bad at all on the bottom of a bag. So if you use two different fabrics, you're fine with that. 
Now you're going to put the inside of the bag inside the bag and take the handles and make sure everything's nice and pressed out. Take the handles and pull those out, the seams out, so those are nice and flat. You want to iron those. You can top stitch it if you'd like too. I usually don't on the bags just because I think they are just a bag. Now you overlap the handles and you can stitch across there. You could also use a button if you want and that could button around like say a walker would be a cool little use for this bag too. And now I'm just going to press this, this so it's nice and flat. And you can just kind of fold in where that pleat was and give it a little press. This is a nice way to kind of prepare your bag to give it as a gift or flat for your car. So look at all the different options you have. These are just fabric sewn together to create a yard and then I just use them as one piece of fabric. Great way to use up your stash. And you can make these with just one yard of fabric if you have it. Take a popular fabric or maybe one you've had in your stash for a while. Um, the bicycle stripe was added. You, could, you can add extra length to a bag by doing that. Easy and fun. Look at this cute little option. If you just don't sew the bottom, you get a little toddler dress. Uh, inside the instructions, it gives you tips and hints on how to make that and some different variations you can make. What a great way to use this. Look at this adorable little dress and bag. So with each panel of interfacing, you can make both of these projects.